Please welcome Kathy Calvin, President of the UN Foundation, and Mohammed Al Gargawi, UAE Minister of Cabinet Affairs and the Future. Well, good afternoon again. It's been an amazing two days, and uh, we're going to have a chance to talk a little bit about hope tonight. But before we get there, I want to invite the minister to talk with us a little bit about what he's been doing in the UAE. As you just heard, he's the Minister of Cabinet Affairs and the Future. Quite a combination. And how many governments even think about putting the future into their planning? But that's not all. So at the time that his post was announced, the government also announced, and this was back at the World Government Summit earlier this year, a minister of happiness, a minister of tolerance, and a youth minister. I know he wants to point it out, but I'm going to do it anyway. Those were all women. <laughs> and the youth minister is 22. So tell us, how does this happen, and what does it mean that you're addressing these issues in the context of government? This sounds a little like church and state. Do they live together? How do you think about that? And, then, and, and even how do you measure those things? Uh, Kathy, first of all, I think the role of government had to change. Mm -hmm. I mean, when you look at the future, you see it in a lot of company, basically. Always they look at the future. And government, usually when we think of government, we think of a bureaucratic uh, process. It's boring, it's not exciting. Even so, our clientele as government in the world, we have seven billion people. We need to look at a product, we need to invent and reinvent our service, and we need to reinvent how government is doing business. So for us in UAE, we looked at our region, we looked at our strength, we looked at our value, and we said, how can we take the country to the second stage? And let me start here with story, basically, when I was eight years old. When I was eight years old, my country was formed. We didn't exist as a country till I was eight, actually, in 1971. And back then, we had only 45 university graduates. Five of them were female. We had no university. My school didn't have electricity and water. Barely we had road. And I remember my first trip from my city, Dubai, to the capital of Abu Dhabi, we didn't have, it was in a sand dune, actually. <laughs> but again, people had hope. People had hope of the future. So whatever we're seeing today, Minister of Youth, who is 22 years old, we believe that you cannot have somebody old that will decide for youth. Youth have to decide for themselves because they are over 65% of the population. So they need to decide how their future will look like. And in today's context, age, age doesn't matter, really. If you are 22 or you are 50, it is how good you are. So our approach to the whole process, basically, is let's look at the future. We are, as a government, our job is creating hope. We live in a region where there is tremendous issue, actually. We have a tough neighborhood. <laughs> when you look at our surrounding, there is a lot of war. There is ethnic cleansing. There is sectarian war. And our job is to create hope for millions of young people. We live in a region where we have close to 500 million people and 65% of them under the age of 25. So either you have almost 300 plus million youth who is positive, who can contribute to their life and their society, or extremists, basically. 
So for us, whatever we do, it's not only our mission. This is our calling as a human being. Either we do the right thing to save our region, we, write the, we build the right model, and it won't, be, it won't be perfect from the first day. We gotta try it and retry it. But we need to enable youth, we need to create hope for the future, and we need to show youth that there is hope in the future. Mm -hmm. Because if there is no hope, it means that you have extremists, basically. So for us, it is, as a government, this is our calling, actually. This is the way we look at, at our business. And how, do, how would you go about measuring whether you've been successful? I mean, obviously, youth unemployment is a challenge globally today. It is in your region. Uh, how, and, and, and I think you're trying to bring people together to measure happiness next year. Maybe you can explain that. We, we measure it in a different way. Let's say I, I told you the story in 1971, basically, when we had no university and there's only five female graduates. You measure it today. Today we have the highest enrollment of female in the world from high school to university. 70% of our un national university graduates are female. We had no road. Today, by 2021, we are going to Mars. And guess, the person who is leading our scientific team, she is 29 years old lady, actually. So she is taking us. That's our measurement. That's how, basically, for us. That's taking society from point zero to a point that people is wondering, this, is this the Mid Middle East? This is the <laughs> Arab world or no, actually? So really, we are empowering our society. Happiness is very scientific. What is the role of government? Is it service? Is it budget? We decided that as a government, really our role, we are into happiness. And people wonder in the beginning, ah, this is not for government. Happiness, somebody else has to work in happiness. But Kathy, the ultimate thing for a human being is happiness. All of us are we are in pursuit of happiness, basically. <laughs> we go to school to graduate, to get a good job, to be happy, basically. We get married to be happy. Some people get divorced to be happy. <laughs> <laughs> but again, everybody is in pursuit of happiness, basically. So in the government, we decided that the ultimate thing for a human being is really its happiness. Service is important. That's an ABC that we have to do it. Budget is important. But and whatever we do, happiness should be our measure. If there is a law that will come up, we gotta make sure that it's gonna create a happy society. And it's very important for youth. By the way, a happy person and a positive person and a person who have hope wouldn't go and blow himself up. He has to be really miserable, basically. So even from a security point of view, by creating a happy society, you are creating a society that's very tolerant. So tell me about, yes, thank you, right. So we don't have a lot of time left, but I want him to tell us about something that, that he did today to address the destruction of a 3,000-year-old classic icon by ISIS. And would you talk a little bit about that? Uh, you remember two years ago, ISIS went to a city in Syria called Palmyra, a very old, innocent city. And they blew up the whole city, actually. And one of the places that they blew was the gate of Palmyra, basically, almost 3,000 years old. And what we did, actually, with the University of Harvard, uh, Harvard University and Oxford, we use technology to rebuild whatever they destroy. And today, in front of City Hall, New York, we launched the Arch of Palmyra that ISIS destroyed. And the message is very clear. Whatever they destroy, we make sure that we rebuild it. And whatever they're trying to erase from our humanity, we make sure that we save it. And we're working with both universities, basically, and looking at, and we started actually that. We are through D, 3D uh, photography, we're archiving every single heritage site 
in the Middle East. And this is our fight against extremists through hope, through happiness, of use of technology, and trying to build the right society, basically. And the end of the day for us, as I stated in the beginning, it is our country calling. We are in the business of creating hope as a nation, but also creating a happy society. And this is the ultimate thing for humanity. Well, what a great reminder to all of us that hope is a verb. It's not just a noun. And you've really shown us that if we take action, make it dynamic, and build every day to have hope tomorrow, this will be a better world. Minister Gurgawi, thank you. Thank for you being very here. much. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.